Hello, in this screencast I'm going to show you how to read contours on a topographic map. Um, so the first thing to begin, um, what we're looking at here is a topographic quadrangle and when we want to read contours we need to zoom in so that we can actually start to find that information. So I'm going to zoom in on the map and I'm going to scroll down to an area where we can start to see some of the contours. The contours tell us what the height of the land surface is above sea level. They are shown on topographic maps in brown lines and they tend to follow the same patterns. They always close in on themselves, they never cross, they never merge, they can get very very close together um, and the different patterns that we see tell us about the topography of the landscape that they're showing you. What we're looking at in this bottom left corner of this quadrangle are some small hills. So we can see these closed circles. These represent high points. If I was standing right here, I would be at the top of a little hill and I could look around at some of the things. I can see that there's some marshy area. So this is a low area that is bounded on either side by contours and that moving up here I would walk if I walk to here up to the top of a little hill that has sort of two little bumps kind of like a camel's back and then if I continue coming down this way I'd be going downhill okay again going uphill and then downhill and down like a little kind of a wash if you will just based on these contours. Contours tend to V or point in the upstream or uphill direction so if we look right here kind of walking this way this would be going up and then if we go back this way it's going down okay so that's some basics that we can see just looking at the contours when contour lines get very close together like we see right in this location that means this is kind of a steeper slope um, versus when they're stretched out more farther apart there is a slope but it's not as steep it's more gradual again we can kind of take a look Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit more to see how those contours change. So again, we can see they're very close together. So this walk up here would be a little bit more strenuous. It would be steeper than this walk if we had to walk up this, up this feature. Okay, and we can go over here by the lake. We can see right here we have, um, if we ha were in the water and we needed to get out, this would be a bit of a steeper climb versus if we swim over to this location, it's much more gradual, a little bit easier to get out of the water. Okay, so again, the contours are these brown lines. Now these blue lines here in the water, these are not contour lines. These are lines showing the bathymetry or depth of the water body, in this case, the lake. So these are actually measured at different, uh, different levels. You see this says 10, this is 20. This is actually showing me the depth of the water right here is 10 feet and this is 20 feet. Now you might be saying, well, how do I know that's feet? Well, I know this because I've looked at this map many times. But for you, you can find out what the contour is and what this map is measured in by looking at the contour interval. So that's this right here. And we see that the contour interval of this map is 10 feet. So that tells us the vertical distance between any of these brown lines on this map is 10 feet. Okay, now if we go over here, we can see that this says 900 on this brown darkened line. Now this is a major contour line. They darken every fifth contour line on a topographic map just to make it easier to read it. Um, and that tells us kind of what these, these bigger, um, bigger lines are. So this is the 900 foot contour. If I go up this hill and I stand on this next contour line, knowing that the contour interval is 10 feet, I've gone up 10 feet in elevation. So this line right here is the 910 foot contour. Now if I go down the hill, I would take 900 minus 10, and this would be the 890 foot contour going all the way around. If I go down one more, 880 feet, 870 feet, and so on. And so we can figure out what these are by finding out these major contours and using that contour interval to calculate between them. Now down here by the lake, we can see this is the 850 foot contour. If we go up to here, 860 feet, 870 feet, 880 feet, um, 890 feet and then back onto a bold contour. This is that 900 foot contour. So again, every fifth contour is going to be bolded and you can use that to figure out between them.
So if you knew that this were the 900 foot contour and this is the 850th con 50 foot contour and you can count between them, you can actually take the elevation between them, divide by the number of lines and actually calculate the contour interval as well. Um, so that's how we read um, the contour lines using that contour interval. Let me see if I can provide another example when looking at the map. All right, so let's look at this little spot right here. We have a nice hill, and we can see that one contour is labeled as a 900-foot contour. There's another major contour that's higher up that's um, darkened but not labeled, and you might be wondering what that is. Well, if we remember that it is a 10, um, let's go in a little bit more. It's a 10-foot contour interval. We go from 900 to 910, 920, 930, 940, then this next dark one is the 950th foot contour interval. Then we have 960, 970, 980 feet above sea level at this point. Okay, um, so again, that would be how we can go and figure out what those contour intervals are. I'm going to scroll down and hope that I find some water. I did want to point out one thing. Um, one common mistake is to think that the water is always at sea level, but it's not. When we're far inland, the elevation, the top surface of our lakes is actually also measured relative to sea level. In this case, this is Lake Wabisa. Um, the surface elevation has been measured at 845 feet above sea level, so that's known. And again, if you look at these um, lines of bathymetry in the lake, we can actually see that they're not being measured re uh, relative to this 845 foot elevation. Um, it's just showing us the depth of the water because when we're out on the lake, um, we would want to know, like, how deep is it if I dropped my camera and I had to go get scuba gear, could I go down and try to find it again? Um, so if this were measured in elevations above sea level, it would start to get confusing. So we do bathymetry relative to the surface of the lake versus topography on the land, which is always me measured relative to sea level. And that's how we read contours on topographic map.